Hi, I'm Heather from Hair Buck Tubes, and we have a different filming setup because I'm filming much later in the day than I usually do. So, for lighting purposes, <laughs> we're doing this. Um, so, six o'clock this morning, I rise up out of a dead sleep. Don't know why I'm halfway down the bed, which is very unusual for me. Don't know what was happening with a list of books running through my head. And I got the idea, the angle, the way to make this video work. This video has been something I've wanted to film for forever. I've mentioned it many times that I love this trope and I would love to do recommendations and stuff, but it's difficult to do without spoiling <laughs> the fact that this exists in the book um, and that, you know, I don't want to ruin it for people. So like, I don't know. I woke up this morning and I knew how to make it work. So here we are. This is mask off characters. So what I mean by this is that this character is on purpose acting like they are just not that threatening, right? They're not that impressive. They are not anyone to keep an eye on. They are just, you know, Bob. They're just Bob. Bob is harmless. Don't worry about Bob. He's a good old boy. He's all shocks. He's, you know, he's the Tim Walls. <laughs> but in all seriousness, like this character is on purpose putting on a front. They are lulling people into a full sense of security and they are very, very good at it. You have a lot of times where these characters are able to do that because of prejudice and because of stereotypes and things like that where people see what they expect to see and when they look at you and you are obviously disabled or you are lower class or you are a woman or what have you, they automatically just write you off, right? Oh yeah, they are really silly, you know, they're kind of dumb. They don't really know what's going on. You don't have to worry about them. And or they are very young. They're too old. They're just kind of annoying and just not the sharpest tool in the shed, you know? And I love when we have those characters purposely giving off that impression, putting up an entire front, then we get like a different character's point of view and we get to see either the mask come off, we get to see them pull the wool over someone else's eyes even though we already know the truth of this person, we get to see them in action, right? And at this point, maybe the reader was always in on it, maybe we have just gotten in on it, but we have this scene where we can see it in action and we can see how incredibly skilled they actually are at what they do, right? I love when like the smartest character in the room, the most clever character, the most dangerous character, like you are in danger, right? You're playing with your life and you don't even realize it because you assume that they are harmless. And I really especially love it when one of the characters has been warned about this character, right? About this clever character. They've been told how dangerous they are. They have been told that they are a threat, but because they believe their eyes, because they believe the act that they are seeing, they see them every single day. They've studied them. They've watched them when they weren't aware that they were being watched and they've never dropped the facade. So it must be the real them. This person must be a fool. They must be just not someone to really worry about. <laughs> And the entire time, at the very beginning, they were told this is the threat. And then they just are like, nah. <laughs> Actually, what an idiot. And then again, you get to see the moment where everything clicks and everything comes together and things become as they actually are and they realize how badly they were played and it's just awesome so i have a list of book recommendations like this i'm not going to let you know um especially the ones that are like twists i'm not going to let you know who or what or when or where <laughs> these things come into play but they are part of these books okay you have some character who knows more than they are letting on. The first one and the one that I fell in love with this trope in and the one that I wanted to get this video out right away for <laughs> is the Queen's Thief series by Megan Whelan Turner, which we are having a live show for in two weeks. So, you know, you have plenty of time to read the first book. This one, this first book is about a thief who can steal anything and the journey they go on for an impossible heist. 
This has women who are underestimated just because they are women. This has disabled characters who are underestimated just because they are disabled. You have characters who are underestimated for their age. You have characters who are underestimated for their personality. You have ones who are underestimated because of their class. You have ones who are underestimated because of their nationality. You have so many different characters in every single book where it's like some of it is people's prejudice and some of it is just the impression that they give. And again, people see what they expect to see. And so if you are playing into what they expect, they don't really question it. This is a young adult fantasy series. It is not a romanticy. However, it does have in the second and third books. One of my favorite romances of all time is like the Mr. Darcy hand flex. Like it's just crumbs. It's just little crumbs and I am obsessed. Like yes, that, that brief sentence, that brief glance that we just had means so much to me. <laughs> like what, what a romance. <laughs> the next one is a book that I just read and I haven't gotten to recommend yet and I cannot wait to talk to you about it and that is Long Live Evil which is Time of Iron number one by Sarah Rees Brennan. This is a girl who is dying of cancer so big content warning for that and she gets the chance to go into her favorite book and she wakes up in her favorite book and she is the villainess instead of the heroine and because she is fully aware of it being a book and because she's read this book and because she knows who the characters are she not only expects everyone to be true to their character type that they were in the book but she also describes them to us the reader as their assigned lot in the book but when you're dealing with real people it's not as simple as a character type, right? And you have several different characters in here, including her, honestly, <laughs> who's really playing up being a villainess. But you have so many characters who are on purpose doing and being and giving what you expect them to give. And that is not the full sum of their parts. And it is a new favorite of the year for me. It is so much fun. If you love villains, if you love fantasy books, if you love romanticy, I can't stop thinking about the ending of this book. I can't wait for book two. I need it now. Um, and book one just came out. So I have such a long wait, but it's not really like a bad cliffhanger or anything like that. You can absolutely read this book before the rest of the series comes out and be happy that you did. It is so, so, so good. <laughs> Next one is The Folk of the Air Trilogy by Holly Black. Obviously the Cruel Prince is a staple in the book community, but Jude is our main character and she's a human who's grown up in fairy and everyone underestimates her simply because she's human, right? And she has a lot of skill and determination and a thirst for power because she has grown up powerless in a society where everyone is stronger than she is. But that is not the character that I'm even thinking of in this book because the Fae cannot lie, but they are professionals at deceiving. And there is a character specifically that is not what he seems. And yet that is the impression, the purposeful act that he is going to give because that is his own power play. And <laughs> I love it. <laughs> The next is the Brook and Rose trilogy by M.A. Carrick. Surprising no one, a lot of my favorites fall into this trope because I am absolutely obsessed with it. In this one, you follow so many different characters and so many of these characters are doing their best to lie <laughs> and to hide who they are and to hide their desires and to hide their power plays and their strategies and how they're going to accomplish everything because they are in competition with so many other factions to come out on top, to win, to do all of these things. There's a lot of political intrigue and a lot of talk about the different classes and how they interact with each other. But there are so, so many great characters in this series who sometimes you know the act that they are doing and sometimes you don't. And we are following so many different points of view that it's really fun to know who knows what do you know this? Do, do you know what I know? <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And it's kind of like the adult version of Six of Crows or The Thief. 
and it really is just like that same vibe but in adult fantasy. Then I have the St. Anne's Serial series by T. Kingfisher. The first book is Paladin and Disgrace. T. Kingfisher in particular writes middle-aged ish late 20s 30s 40s women in fantasy and they are very good at letting the misogyny that they deal with be the way that they get away with what they're doing <laughs> be the way that they manipulate you be the way that they are just like oh i'm just a silly little woman what do i know oh oopsie officer i didn't mean to do that you know it's so funny it's so sweet it's so well done i love all of these books but truly some of them are geniuses, some of them are not, but the way that they all <laughs> just let people perceive them as they are perceived and use that to their advantage, oh, it's so good. Next I have The Bastard's Betrayal by Katie Roberts. This is a mafia romance and she has a long-term boyfriend. She is a mafia heir and she finds out right at the beginning that her boyfriend is not who he said he was and actually their entire relationship was a lie. Not just their relationship, but the person he was in their relationship and he's not going to let her go that easily and so now she's going to be um in a romantic entanglement with the real person that she's known for all this time being a completely different person and someone who is her equal in every way <laughs> Next I have the Kate Daniels series by Alona Andrews. Obviously I've talked a lot about how much I love this series, but Kate Daniels is a mercenary who is purposely downplaying her skills for lots of different reasons, mainly safety though. But that is not the only character. In fact, this is, is a very strong point in Alona Andrews writing that I haven't really talked about that that much, I don't think. But so many times their characters are like, you can do this the easy way or the hard way. You can walk away from this in one piece or you're going to die. And people just never believe them. It doesn't matter which one of the characters that we follow is saying it. Um, they just never believe them. They always underestimate them and then they whip the floor with them. And another thing with this is her romance throughout the entire 10 book series is Curran, who is a very powerful shifter and the head of the shifters in North America, etc. But because he is so strong and because of prejudice against shifters and everything like that, a lot of people think that he is all brawn and no brain. Again, like the stereotype, they see what they expect to see. And so it's fun to see people underestimate him and get played for fools. Next I have Faded Blades by Alana Andrews. This is a sci-fi novella if you want to be able to try their writing just with a very small little bite-sized piece. This would be a really good one. This is reluctant allies to lovers so they are enemies in the sense that their families have always been enemies. They've actually never met but they are from rival families and both of their spouses steal from them and run away together. And so they reluctantly have to join forces to get back uh, the information that their spouses stole so that they can continue pro to protect their family's financial well-being and place in society. The thing about this that I absolutely adore, it's very fun magic, it's very fun world building, all of that is fun. But the thing that I love about this is that they are two people at the top of their game and they understand each other in every single way. And the interesting part is their spouses got to know the loving version of them, right? They downplayed themselves for their spouses. They loved their spouses. So it was safe to be with them and their spouses forgot who they were dealing with, especially when the love is gone, when you have betrayed them. This is not the easygoing spouse that you have known all these years. This is the head of the family that you just double cross that will kill people for much, much less. Like you knew who they were, you knew who they were the entire time, but you were well and truly lulled into a full sense of security because they loved you. The only thing that was keeping you this safe was their love for you and you decided to betray that. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> the next one is Blood Grace by Vila Roth, particularly this first book because our main character is the bastard daughter of the king and she really doesn't have any 
uh, rights or security. She's at the whim of the king and she, you know, has to really carefully maneuver everything in court. She cannot appear to have too much power. She cannot appear to have too much favor from any one group. She is trying to keep from getting married off to all these different awful people for political alliances. So she really is incredibly clever and knows what she's doing and is very, very skilled, but she has to hide all of that and literally cannot let it be known that she is anything more than just the simple, quiet, silly, useless daughter. I get with this series, I read all four books in like a week and I probably won't read any more even though I liked all of those books. So it has a little asterisk beside it. But for that reason in particular, that is why I really liked the beginning of this series. The vampires that she is trying to form an alliance with are a little too goody two shoes for my personal taste. But that's probably the religious trauma talking and you probably don't have to worry about that. <laughs> And lastly, I have Run Pussy Run by Casey Wills. This is another mafia one, and this is another one where you have a long-term relationship, and right at the beginning of the book, you find out that they were not who you thought they were the entire time. For both of them, actually. He kicks her out and then drags her back. <laughs> And now they're going to have to have a relationship. He won't let her go. She's a captive, basically. They're going to have to have a relationship again with the real person. The person that they were completely unaware was the person they'd been involved with for so long. And how different that looks and how that is, you know, their one true love. Because <laughs> he's a psychopath. And, you know, she's his obsession. So that's it. Those are some books with this type of character who is the smartest, most skilled, most impressive, most deadly person in the room. But you're not going to know that unless they want you to know that. And I find that to be a thrilling reveal every single time. And it just really works for me. It is something I love. <laughs> So if you have any recommendations for me with a character like this, don't let me know what the character is or any of that, but just give me the book title. I would absolutely love that because this is not something you can search very easily. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!